情是。Today we're going to be looking at a 2001 Irish short film called Cocka Millish. This film has gone on to become somewhat of a cult classic in Ireland, not because it's good or anything, but because of circumstances that have led to entire generations of Irish people seeing it. Before we watch it, let me explain. In Ireland, our end of school exams before you go on to college or whatever else are collectively called the Leaving Cert. You study for the Leaving Cert for two years, and it's made up of a number of subjects, most of your own choosing, and some that are mandatory, with exceptions. These are English, Maths, and Irish. For both English and Irish, you need to study some forms of art, generally literature in that language, for certain questions on the exam. The curriculum gives you a choice of material, but really it's your teacher's choice, and it just so happens that the short film Cock and Millish was on that curriculum, and so many Irish youths around the country were forced to watch it, and still are, as far as I'm aware. I think I was in the only Irish class in my year at school to not see Cog and Millish. My teacher chose a book instead, which was very disappointing to me because it meant I missed out on all the Cog and Millish memes. Actually, it was mostly just people going, well, Cog and Millish, which was funny, but I wanted to understand the context. And when I asked friends in other Irish classes, their explanations never made any sense. Having seen the movie, I now understand why they weren't able to explain. It's something that just has to be seen. The movie opens with this woman, Catherine, driving to the train station. She's brought her elderly mother, and it's implied Catherine is her caretaker when she's not at work. Someone put this bag out of her misery. I'm already sick of her whinging. So this caretaker is going to look after the mother while Catherine goes to work, I suppose. So she just gives her the entire car. All right. Here's my elderly mother and my car. Don't scratch the car. Cock a millish. I should point out that that means cake in Irish. Take a guess how that will tie into the story. I guarantee you'll be fucking wrong. Catherine gets on the train and starts reading a book. I guess it's suggested that between looking after her mother and work, reading this book on her commute is the one respite she has. But watch out, here comes this blind fella, played by Brendan Gleeson. So good. Man. Masterful scene direction here. She picks up something that fell off screen. I didn't even realize what happened until I watched it back. And is that really his reaction? All he says is, a woman. No thank you or nothing. That's how you know we're dealing with a powerful force here. This bastard's annoying the bollocks off me already. He starts talking to Catherine, interrupting what appears to be an erotic novel, the dirty thing. I don't know, I don't know. I took a toilet. I'm sure no thank you. Who bought it? Is it? Looks like the view is as good for me as it is for you. There it is. The Cocker Millish. <sighs> oh. 
I hate this fucker. Well, you'd hate to think you were getting pink and then actually get some other colour. Cheated indeed. He starts asking a load of questions then about coffee. He's dying to have some with his cake. He even tries guilting Catherine into going to get some for him instead of just waiting for the cart to come around. Then he continues annoying her with random small talk. What smut is this one reading? See you on Tauri. I'm queen lad. Gal go dear here in the egg. Oh, and I live with her too. Love story me whole. This somehow prompts the blind man to start talking about his asthma. It's so bad he was apparently on the radio to talk about it. He starts recounting the whole day this happened. Catherine is so annoyed she looks like she's starting to lose touch with reality. These are the two people you'll meet on Irish transport. Annoying cunt and deathly annoyed. I've been both. The blind man explains he's been taking this route for his holidays since he was very young and knows exactly what's outside the window at any stage of the journey. Um, <laughs> We've just reached a pivotal moment in the story where Catherine realises she can distress the blind man with her imagination. Her cruelty is a bit creepy, but this fella's been a bastard hassler in her the whole time, so I'll allow it. Ah, the coffee cart has finally rolled around. That'll keep the blind fella occupied for a while and give poor Catherine a rest. Alright, never mind. Catherine stays quiet, forcing the man to pour the sugar himself. He makes a mess. I feel like this task is not as difficult to do without seeing as he makes it out to be. Wait, hold on. That's his coffee? It's tiny! He asked for four fucking sugars in this thing? Well, he certainly got a sweet tooth, I'll say that much. Speaking of which, he can now finally dine on his cake. Mm. Dirty bastard. This 
film is getting dangerously close to me turning it off. What's the point of all of this? Where is this going? He offers Catherine some of the cake. She declines, so he packs it up for later in the most noisy and disturbing way possible. All right, I guess he's back to eating it now. That didn't even last a minute. Catherine decides to use her powers of imagination again. Talk to you, Hmm? Okay, stop, 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 stop. I want to see where Cantron is going with this worm thing, but first let's talk about the set. Where is the lighting coming from when they're in this tunnel? The lighting does subtly change when they enter the tunnel, but it looks like that's just the guys on set dimming some lights. Look at the light on the table. Look at the shadows. The light in this scene is obviously coming from the window, but it's pitch black. And just in case the illusion of this being bound by the laws of physics wasn't totally shattered, the train then exits the tunnel. The direction the train appears to be travelling doesn't quite match up with the direction that this car is facing. Maybe the most bold display of multi-track drifting we've ever seen. Anyways, please continue with the worm, Catherine. <laughs> Oh good, more of this. The blind man is very distressed at the thought of having eaten a worm. <laughs> And that's the end. She killed him. She just killed him. I mean, I know he was annoying, but like, you killed him. Why not just move seats? There was plenty of room on the train. Although I will say I did enjoy his window wiper hands. So yeah, a man annoys a woman on a train, so she kills him. That's what you study in school. Well, 
if you're not me. I didn't get to see Cock and Millish in school because we read some book instead. Of course, being Irish, the book was quite dark too. I can't remember what it was called, but it's about this girl who becomes a single mother and is shunned by society because it's like 1960s Catholic Ireland, and then she kills the baby and herself, or something like that. Basically, if you study Irish, you're gonna have a bad time, because it seems most of our stories are dark and depressing. I'll never understand why you would teach a language in this fashion. I mean, I get that a lot of good stories are depressing, but you're a teenager, in school, learning a language. The darkness is already there, you know? Why not try to associate learning this language with joy by reading a nice book or watching a nice short film? I don't even get it, you know? I, I mean, she killed him, I, I got that, but what's the message here? Like, what was the point in showing us all this? Maybe it makes more sense if you've actually studied it, but as I said, I read the Single Mother Suicide book, so I don't know. So I didn't get to see Cock and Millish in Irish class, but I did get to see Blade Runner in English class. Yep, Blade Runner was on the curriculum for a while, and overall I have to say, if I had to forego Cock and Millish, to study Blade Runner, I'm not too disappointed. Yeah, that's the Irish education system. Both Cock and Millish and Blade Runner were on the curriculum at the same time. That's pretty strange. You know what might be even stranger? Thanks to this video, there are now people who have never even been to Ireland who have seen Cock and Millish before they've seen Blade Runner. And for that, all I humbly request in return is subscribe.